Hi, for this video, the third part out of three, we'll be discussing thickening and sedimentation. Some principles. Separation of a dilute slurry into a clear fluid and a slurry of higher solids content is called sedimentation. Industrial sedimentation operation may be carried out patchwise or continuously. So for gravity sedimentation, there are two types. First is what you call the dilute sedimentation, wherein you'll observe free settling. This is the case wherein particles are able to settle as individuals. Whereas in hindered settling or thickening, this is the term used to describe behavior at a higher concentration where sedimentation rates are largely related to concentration rather than to particle size. So illustrated in here, are the different sedimentation zones and and what are the factors that affect sedimentation mainly the particle size the liquid or fluid viscosity the solid and solution density and lastly the type of particle in the slurry so you can see in here different zones a at time zero is what you call the zone settling b is where there is already some separation you'll have the clarified zone on top and then the zone settling is found at the bottom here and you will also see formation of zones c and d c is the transition between a and d and then d is what you call the compression zone wherein this one is purely the sludge and you'll notice that at the end of the settling time you will only have what you call the clarified zone and the sludge in the compression zone. Let's just go to discussing further the different zones. In the particulate settling, it is encountered at low concentration where particles are sufficiently far apart to settle freely. That's why it's called free settling. Next, in the zone settling period, this is after the free settling where particles settle as a mass here settling rate of mass becomes a function of the concentration so this is where you'll start forming the transition zone and then you have what you call the compression settling so you'll start forming the dark ones the compacted sediments in d particles descent restrained by hydrodynamic forces and of course the particles below if they're already compacted they won't be compacted any further so further increase in solids concentration due to particles filling up the void so you can see here that some of the liquid that's still entrained in here in the interstices would be able to go out and the, the solids will further be compacted in here again to illustrate at the start all the particles settle freely by free settling just like what i have mentioned earlier where the time is zero and the height is z sub zero and then what happens is that this one be becomes in suspension the particles are still in suspension and then there's the clarified zone so the particles in zone b settle at a uniform rate at the start and the clear liquid zone a appears the height z in here drops at a constant rate so the z is the height at which you'll still find the solid particles zone d begins to appear here at the bottom the compacted solids so zone d is where you contain the settled particles they're the bottommost part zone c is the transition layer whose solids content varies from that of zone b to that of zone d so basically this transition zone wherein you have some solids particle on top they're less in solids and then zone d at the bottom the more compacted so it's more solid so that's the transition zone and then after further settling zone b and zone c disappear so you'll notice here zone b and c from here to this one it disappears and then you will still have further setting where the all the other liquid will be coming out of this zone and then it will be compacted so you'll see here that compression first appears this is called the 
critical zone. During compression, liquid is expelled upwards from zone D and the thickness of zone D decreases. So this one you can see here, the graph of settling time versus the clear liquid interface height, Z. So in here you'll notice that the height decreases as a function of time. So in this slide, you will notice the relationship between the zones on top in the figures and the height as a function of settling time. And of course, here, similar, that as the time progresses, what happens is that the height, of course, of the interface decreases, and then the height of the sludge increases. In order to solve for the velocity, it's basically just the change in the height with respect to time. So let's go to some of the formulas. For free settling, the velocity is equal to the initial height minus the z at c divided by theta sub c. So what is z sub c? That's basically the height of the interface between the clear liquid and the slurry when the zone b disappears. Theta sub c is the time elapsed when solids particles reach zc from the initial height. For hindered settling where zone c starts, the velocity is given by negative change in height with respect to time, which is actually equal to k times z minus z infinity. And then when we integrate this differential equation from theta c to theta and zc to any z, you'll be able to come up with this equation. k theta minus theta c equals ln of zc minus z infinity all over z minus z sub infinity where in z is height of the interface between the liquid and the slurry at any time theta and then the z sub infinity is the final or ultimate height of the sludge or sediment and k is the constant for the given suspension and then please take note of this the critical setting point this is basically the point at which a single distinct interface forms between clear liquid and sediment and that the height of the sediment is called the critical height. So let's go to some sample problems. A laboratory test on suspension of a solid in liquid gave the following information. Original height of the sludge before settling is 10 inches. Free settling rate is 0 0.10 inch per minute. And then the height of the sludge at the free settling period is 6.5 inches. Height of the sludge at the end of 120 minutes is 4 inches. Height of the sludge when settled completely is 1.5 inches. So this is for the laboratory. Now, 1,000 cubic feet of similar sludge is to be settled in a vertical cylindrical tank the diameter of which is equal to the depth of the liquid suspension in it. Calculate the time it would take for the solid to settle to a height of 20% of the original height of the sludge. So here, you basically have a laboratory test followed by scaling it up. So let's solve. In here, you're initially given Z sub 0, which is 10 inches. And then you're also given free settling velocity during free settling you're given velocity of 0 0.10 inch per minute at the free settling period it's 6.5 inches so let's just call this z sub 1 6.5 inches at the end of the free settling period so the height of the sludge at the end of 120 minutes is 4 inches. So that means 4 inches does not happen during the free settling anymore. We can see in here that this one is basically at time is equal to 120 minutes. This is the height is 4 inches. All right. And then lastly, height of the sludge when settled completely is 1.5 inches. So when theta is infinity, basically z sub infinity is 1.5 
in chess. So that means this one on the the second figure happens at the hindered settling because that's the end of the between um the second and the third this is where hindered settling and the compression zone starts to happen compression settling all right so we know the different zones and then what is required is eventually we need to scale it up to 1000 cubic feet of similar sludges to be settled so that means here if it is to be scaled up to a tank where the diameter is the initial height z o z sub o and then that the given volume is 1000 cubic feet we are required to find the time it would take for the height to be 20 percent of the original height so time wherein the height is 20 percent of the original height all right so how do we solve this first let's look at the free settling period you know that for the free settling you we have a formula so initial minus z sub c all over theta sub c and then we need to solve for the theta sub c what time will it reach that period you're given u sub t of 0 0.1 0 inch per minute and then initial height of 10 inches minus the end of the free settling that's 6.5 inches so that means we will solve for the time at which it reaches 6.5 inches so that theta sub c is equal to 35 minutes when you look back you can see in here that at 35 minutes it reaches this portion this is where theta sub c is so 120 minutes is further down the road that is already at 4 inches so let's solve for the hindered settling because we need to solve for the characteristic k the constant k so for hindered settling let's look at the formula u sub t is negative dz over d theta where that is basically k z minus z infinity so u sub t is negative dz with respect to theta or k z minus z infinity also is equal to ln of z c minus z infinity all over z minus z infinity so we have some of those values provided to us we don't know what k is but we know that at 120 minutes minutes which is your theta it is at four inches height so 120 minutes minus you were able to solve for theta sub c which is 35 is equal to ln of 6.5 minus z infinity is 1.5 inches all over this is at 4 inches 120 minutes minus 1.5 inches so with this it would give us a k value of 8.1547 times 10 to the negative 3 per minute the thing is we were able to get the k we were able to get theta sub c but then we still haven't answered the theta at which the height will be only at 20 percent of the initial height so first what is 20 percent of the initial height in our case since we started with 10 inches z z is equal to 20 percent of the initial height since the initial height given to us was 10 inches, that means this is at 2 inches. This is what we would like to solve for. But look, at 1.5 inches, this is where it stops. Okay, so we were able to solve for z sub c. This z1 is your z sub c. It's greater than 2 inches. And 2 inches is greater than z infinity so that means that the two inches happens after 6.5 and before 1.5 inches within the hindered settling and compression settling zone within this portion 
So since in this case, ZC is greater than Z, so that means this happens during the hindered settling zone. So with this, maybe we can still look further applying the K and then applying the theta sub C. We can look for the time it takes to reach the 2 inches. To reach Z is equal to 2 inches, let's plug in the values. 8.1547 times 10 to the negative 3 multiplied by theta, because that's what we're looking for. Minus 35 is equal to the ln of 6.5 minus 1.5. And then this is 2 minus 1.5. So in here, you'd be able to solve for theta, which is 317.36 minutes. So to reach Z, which is 2 inches, you have 317 0.36 minutes. Now that we were able to solve for that, like how long will it take to only be 20% of the original height during the test? Because the first set here is our laboratory setup. Now, for the scale up, you remember that volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times height. It so happened that initially it's stated there that the diameter is the same as the initial height so i can see here that this one let's just convert this to diameter pi d squared over 4 and then this one is height and then since d is equal to z sub 0 initially i can see that this one is z sub 0 squared over 4 this is z sub 0 or pi over 4 z sub 0 cube and then the, initially the volume that you were given was 1000 cubic feet so this is 1,000. So what was the initial height of the tank? You can see that the initial height of the tank is actually 10.8385 feet. All we need to do now that we know this one is do the scale up. So what we can say is Z, the height of the actual tank over the height of the lab scale is equal to theta of the actual or the time of the actual over time of the lab. So we were able to solve for the z actual, the initial height. Initial height is 10.8385. So this one, if you want to multiply this by 20%, it's okay. But then you have to multiply the Z of the laboratory by 20% as well. But if we only take this one as the 10 inches, let's make them have the same dimension. So dimensionally consistent. The actual time, we still don't know this. All over the laboratory is 317.16 in terms of minutes. You'll be able to solve for the actual 4,100. 25.05 minutes or actual time is 68.75 hours for the sediments to settle to a height of 20% the original. So this is the answer. I hope you understand the problem. Thank you.